And, and we're just a couple of minutes away from the start of our uh, Sunday services here at Worship on the Water at uh, Lake County. We're at the Linger Longer Pavilion. And we still got a few... Uh, Saying up, coming down, coming over. It's overcast, but no rain. So good, you know. If you're if you're in uh, the Reynolds Lake immediate area, you still got time. As you see, people still still coming down. So we may maybe a little uh, a little late start. Good morning. There this go. is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord be with you. Yes, we're in the midst of ordinary time in the liturgical calendar because the British Open has yet to make it to the liturgical calendar. But we know it's British Open Sunday as well, so uh, we will get you home. For those of you who came out to watch it, and for those of you who are at home toggling between us and the British Open, uh, we're glad to have you by internet as well. The what? The Open Championship. Thank you. So we want to make it right. So anyway, it's that Sunday. Open championship. Those of us from Augusta don't consider it that high. So anyway, uh, you know, y'all enjoy where you live. Anyway, um, so just to be clear. Um, so it, starting off our service today, we're really pleased uh, to have one of the Youth Alliance uh, scholars among us today. And Ed uh, Coker is going to come and introduce her. Ed is been a member uh, of our church for quite a while and also a leader in our church. He's also the board chair for the Lake Oconee Youth Alliance. So we're going to have Ed come up and introduce one of our young scholars. Ed? You turn that off. <laughs> Thank you, David. As I was getting ready to come to church this morning, I thought of this congregation, how many programs that is actually sponsored, dating back to food to the food banks, to the uh, addiction support group, to the dementia group, through what was a uh, the Lake Oconee Church uh, Youth Alliance, and now the continuing support of the Lake Oconee uh, Youth Alliance. Um, it seems to me that a lot of good programs are born out of congregations just like ours. And the young lady that I'm going to introduce is just one example of 29 people because of your efforts that we currently have on scholarship and another 50 to 60 that we are currently helping with dorm assistance programs. All made possible because this congregation years ago had the foresight to help the children. Cameron Smith attended Green County High School, graduated in 2019. During high school, co-captain of cheerleaders, selected for, tip, for participation in the UGA leadership program, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority member, vice president of DECA. I'm not sure what DECA is, you can explain <laughs> that. During college, she attends Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, studies fashion design, merchandising and entrepreneurship. She was selected for the university's honors program. She is a member of Phi Epsilon Omicron Professional Honor Society. And Greg, you'll like this, President's List 4.0 for the past two quarters. And as I mentioned before, our batting average is in the 95 plus percentile of the ones that are chosen to receive scholarships from either this congregation or other community support and are on schedule to graduate and become productive members of society. Cameron? First, thank God for allowing me the opportunity to join you all this morning. And secondly, I would like to thank you all for inviting me to share with you all. You all have helped me so much, not only to pursue a higher education at Georgia Southern University, but also in my preparation for a successful career after college. I've met so many wonderful people and I've made so many connections that I'll value for, the whole, for my whole life. In the fall, I'll be attending Georgia Southern University and I'll be entering my third semester there. 
and after this semester in the fall, I'll be entering my senior semester there. My major is fashion merchandising and apparel design, and also in the fall, I'll start taking my first classes towards my minor in entrepreneurship and innovation. Through my, though my schedule this coming fall is a little bit busier than it has been these past two semesters due to COVID restrictions, I am excited for the challenges that I'll be faced with and the new knowledge that I'll gain, especially with my minor coming up. So I'm very interested with that. My proudest accomplish, accomplishment from this semester was my 4.0 that I earned. I worked really hard for that, so I was very proud to be able to you know, succeed with that, especially meeting a few challenges and bumps in the road, but it wasn't anything that I wasn't able to overcome and eventually you know, was thankful for in the end. Also at my school, my specific school for my major is the School of Human Ecology, and starting this fall, I have the opportunity to be an ambassador for my school. I'm excited to serve as an ambassador for my major as well. And as an, and as an ambassador, I'll be helping to organize events within my specific school, familiarize new students with their new majors and minors in our program, and also welcoming and recruiting our new students to our school. This provides the perfect opportunity for me to continue to build my networking skills and also build a strong resume that will help me in my post-college career. As a student, I'm most proud of the personal growth that I've noticed in myself during my transition from high school to college. Going to college really has taught me valuable skills about life and my future career that I wouldn't have been able to learn anywhere else. I've been pushed beyond what I thought I would be, and I've been taught skills of my career and my passion that have never crossed my mind before. I never thought I'd be working in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, and those have actually become some of my favorite skills, so I'm thankful for that new knowledge as well. I think about my future every single day, more so than I was even before going to college. And even before I went to college, I was thinking about it constantly. So even more so now, and I am thankful for that as well. I thank God for blessing me to not only be able to pursue my dream, dream career, but also blessing me to be able to grow in my passion and strive towards knowing more in my field. Each day, I'm thinking more of what I can do to better myself and how I can grow, not only as a person, but within my field, and how I can grow to help others who are coming behind me as well. After graduation, my plans are to move to New York and begin the start of my career in the fashion world. I'm looking forward to being able to start out small and earn my way into a bigger, more known and established career as a fashion designer. I pray that throughout my journey, God continues to bless me and direct me the way he always has, that I may continue to be blessed with a humble and persevering spirit. I thank you all for having me and allowing me to share with you my college journey at Georgia Southern University. I thank you all again for the blessings that you have given me, not only in my college career, but also towards my future career after college. Thank you. Thank you. Cameron, thank you. That gives us hope. Uh, individuals like you give us hope for the future. We very much appreciate it. And I'm just here to tell you, she preached from just her phone, and someday I'll be able to do that as well. <laughs> I've not done that yet, but I noticed how she did that excellent speech all from her phone. So someday, I do scripture reading, but I've not gained that skill yet. So anyway, yeah, give her another big hand. We're just so, so proud of you. Thanks for coming this morning and sharing with us. We appreciate it. If you please, if you're able, please stand and let us sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.
our time of prayer meditation, let's remember those uh, who we have prayer concerns. I'm sure you bring prayer concerns here as well, but we want to continue uh, to pray for Tom and Marjorie Rouse uh, as they continue to grieve uh, the loss of their daughter. Uh, we also, uh, this week, and now I'm drawing a blank, Fears, Carolyn Fears uh, passed away this week. Uh, not a member of our church, but has been a leader in our community. Uh, had brain cancer, if you're familiar, and she passed away this week. So I want to be in prayer for her. And then the Blythe family, which actually lives right over, they have a house right over here. They live in Atlanta, but there's a house over here who come most every summer here during uh, here. His father passed away. So Roger's father, who has actually attended here as well. Her parents come quite often. His parents came some, and uh, his father passed away uh, this week. And so I want to be in prayer for those family members that we're aware of, those church family members. Any others that anyone wants to share that we need to be aware of for Anna? Let's take a moment of silence, and then I'll lead us in the community prayer. So let us pray. We've gathered once again, O oh God, in this place to come and worship you. And Lord, losing a loved one is a difficult, difficult situation, especially when there are tragic circumstances surrounding each and every one. We just pray, Lord, for the family members who remain. Uh, pray for uh, peace and comfort. Uh, and may the Holy Spirit be present amongst them during these difficult times. And help us as a community to know how to respond to each of these individuals as well so that we too show love and support and presence in their lives uh, as they continue to grieve. And Lord, grief doesn't just disappear within weeks. Many of us continue to grieve months and years after folks have passed away. We continue to grieve of the loss of friends and family and others, Lord, influential members of our lives. So grief kind of lives with us for a long time uh, as we uh, continue to remember. And, and so help us, Lord, uh, as a community of faith to be the kind of place that allows for that grief uh, to live and to, and to be resolved and be taken care of uh, and that within your love we're able to move on uh, and to, to be uh, uh, the, the individuals we've been called to be even while we carry grief with us. So help us, Lord, to be that supportive uh, group of people, that supportive community, us being in your presence here in this Lake Laconia area. Help us to be those things, oh God, uh, so that we truly are doing as you've called us to do. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture text today comes from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. It's part of the lectionary uh, readings for today, but it's the Pauline uh, readings for today. Ephesus chapter 2, beginning with verse 11, going through verse 18. And I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. So remember that once you were Gentiles by physical descent, who were called uncircumcised by Jews who are physically circumcised, and at that time you were without Christ. You are aliens rather than citizens of Israel and strangers to the covenants of God's promise. In this world, you had no hope and no God. But now, thanks to Christ Jesus, you were once were so far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Christ is our peace. He made both Jews and Gentiles into one group. With his body, he broke down the barrier of hate that divided us. He canceled the detailed rules of the law so that he could create one new person out of two groups, making peace. He reconciled them both as one body to God by the cross, which ended the hostility to God. When he came, he announced the good news of peace to you who are far away from God, to those who were near. We both have access to the Father through Christ by one spirit. This is the word of God. For the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. A teenage boy enters a high school classroom and he thinks, ah, there are nozzles sticking up out of the desk. 
He plays with the nozzle while the teacher is calling the roll, and then the teacher shouts, uh, just, just, Josiah, but don't touch that. You can blow up us all to smithereens. Well, Josh had never heard of a classroom who could blow up. He thought that it could actually be a fun idea if all of that occurred. And then the teacher begins, this week you're going to talk about safety. Now you might think this is boring and you might know everything there is to know about safety in the classroom. But take it from me, you don't. So listen to every word I say. Your life and your future health may actually depend on it. So during the week, someone behind Josh asked the teacher a question. Well, what's the chart up on the wall? What do those strange numbers and those strange words mean? Well, you're not ready for that, says the teacher. Those are the secrets that are to be revealed to those in this classroom. For now, be patient and wait. At the end of the week, there's a test on how to be safe. In recognition of the students passing this test, they receive a white coat and goggles. Now, says the teacher with a sense of expectancy, now you are ready to enter the world of chemistry. There is that day later in the semester when the teacher points to the chart and says, now you are last ready to learn the secrets. I'm going to teach you how to do things with these symbols that you've never done before. I'm going to take you to places you have never gone had you not had the good sense to take chemistry. And the chemistry textbook, it's not just full of facts and figures and formulas. It has pictures of heroes with short biographies, lives of folks who stood up by their convictions and ignored those who made fun of their beliefs and taught us, taught us how to pasteurize milk, make penicillin, and discover DNA. You might say that they're the saints of chemistry. After the first semester, Josh helps carry in a bag of groceries for his mother. He puts down the package and he pulls something out of it. Heat activated deodorant. Josh reads aloud and instantly and instinctively, he'll just turn the can around and say to himself, I wonder, I wonder what this has in it. Something that reacts to heat, I guess. And he reads the list of chemicals in the deodorant. As his mother looks on awe as she stands there, just in awe of the moment, here's this miraculous transformation in the life of her son, which has been worked just in a very few short months, thanks to the chemistry class. Now when Josh looks out the window in the morning, he no longer sees the same world that he saw five months ago. He has adopted, he has been adopted into a household called chemistry. As Josh studied chemistry with all of its weird and wonderful rules, rituals, symbols, transforming chemicals, wonderful reactions and the discovery of new themes, Josh begins to see the world with different eyes. When he looked at a green plant in the garden, he would not only see its shape and its color, but he would see carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, uh, cellulose, uh, fructose, uh, amino acids, enzymes, DNA, all combined together to make a simple leaf. And just as Josh has been adopted into the family of chemistry and to begin seeing things differently, likewise, when God adopts you and me into his family, the world around us and the people in our lives are seen with different eyes. Just as an adoption of a child in today's world takes a whole lot of patience and is very costly, so also it is in our adoption into God's family. 
Paul highlights this with no cheap exercise getting us into the, God's family. And it took a whole lot of love on God's part. It took a whole lot of patience on God's part to pull off our adoption. He chose us as his own before the world was created, and it took centuries, centuries for us to finally arrive here on this planet. And during the centuries leading up to our birth, the lack of faith and commitment of our ancestors from the time of Adam and Eve right up to today, it must have tested God's patience. But God's love for us, for you and me, was more powerful than his disappointment in us and those who had gone before us. And he sent his son. Paul really wants to emphasize how wonderful this is. Regular churchgoers like us, we've heard this a million times, and it really is quite something that blows your mind when you realize that the Holy God came into the dirt and into the sin of this world. He suffered to the hands of sinful people. We nailed him to a cross. And yet in spite of this rejection, in spite of this suffering, God's love wins the day. And it is his pleasure and his delight to make us his children. The greatness of the love that God showed us in Christ Jesus is extraordinary. In fact, extraordinary is too weak of a word. How about amazing, colossal, enormous, gigantic, marvelous, surprising, and what every other, whatever ever other word comes to your mind. Paul puts it this way in Ephesians. Let us give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his love, God has already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his children. This was his pleasure and purpose. For by the blood of Christ, we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. In other words, God comes to us personally with his amazing and surprising love and reclaims us from sin and guilt as forgiven and as adopted children. When you and I realize all of this, we become just like Josh, who I mentioned earlier, who sees the world in a whole new way. For you see, through chemistry, Josh saw the world around him and even himself with different eyes. Paul points it out that you and I, we see other people in the church with different eyes. No longer is it a matter of just giving back equally, if not more, than what we are given when it comes to revenge or discriminating against those who are different and have less worldly goods or hold different views in politics or religion or sport or holding grudges and belittling others or being hard to get on with. No, we now see everybody. We see everybody in the body of Christ, in the church, and even our neighbors with different eyes. Paul doesn't beat around the bush when he says, get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tenderhearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. Paul admits that even in the church, there are Jews and Gentiles. Slaves and free, rich and poor, males and females. And here's the amazing thing what God and Jesus has done. He has brought us all together, all together in the church. There is no room for divisions or for better than thou attitudes or gossip or backstabbing. He makes the point that whatever our background or whatever our personality type, we are all been, we've been joined together in Christ. We are now citizens together with God's people and members of God's family and joined together into a sacred temple dedicated to the Lord. And to use Paul's words, we are all one body. We have the same spirit. and We've been called to the same glorious future. People like you and I and the people sitting all around us, we come together because we find Jesus. 
Jesus makes a difference to the way we regard each other. We are no longer strangers. We are no longer foreigners, as Paul says. But because of Jesus, you and I, we are members of God's family. We are able to welcome and understand one another as fellow members of God's household. Even though we are all different, and we all have our own individual ways and occupations. Paul isn't suggesting for one minute that everybody in this congregation, in fact, throughout the church universal, throughout the world, must be best buddies. He's not saying that. And he's not saying that we should regard everyone the exact same. That's impossible. But besides, we are all individuals with our own personalities, and it's natural for us to be closer to some people than to others. But what Paul is saying is that the love, peace, and forgiveness that Jesus has brought into our lives and into our church should in no way be disrupted by selfishness, unforgiveness, anger, resentment, or whatever else might destroy the special bond that we have because of our oneness in Christ. I wonder if we did a survey around the congregation and those we have connections with here in LOCC in the past and how many people who hold hurts and grudges who don't speak to certain people or hold certain resentments toward fellow Christians. If we would answer honestly, I think we would be embarrassed to discover the dividing walls of hostility in using Paul's words that separate Christian members of families, of friends, of communities, of churches. We don't seem to, to, we don't seem to be able to help ourselves. E either we are the ones giving the offense or we are the ones that are easily offended. And no one makes any attempt to seek reconciliation or go through the dividing walls. And that's why every time that you and I would gather for worship together, we see our sins, disobedience, it, it marks our lives. We're cut off from God. We, we build up a dividing wall between us and our Heavenly Father, a wall of sin. And it's a wall that destroys our relationship to God, a wall that destroys our relationship with other people. And we know how good we are at building walls between us and others. And we know how easily we can take the moral high ground and to blame someone else for an unhappy situation. So we come to church humbly, humbly confessing our sins before God and before one another. And any time we take communion, we're sharing in that one body, that same blood of Jesus. And we continue to commune with Christ and to come closer to one another. Sure, there are those with whom we have disagreements, but in the body and the blood of Jesus, we will put that behind us and we receive, we receive Jesus' forgiveness, forgiveness of our sins to keep the bond and the peace of Christ that we share. So just as Josh saw everything differently because of his knowledge of chemistry, you and I, we too, see the people around us differently because of our knowledge of the love that Jesus has for us and the love that he has placed into our hearts. We see other people differently because they have a special connection with us because of our oneness in Christ. Paul finishes his letter to the Ephesians with a prayer for unity. May the God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give to all Christians peace and love with faith. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen. If you would please stand as we sing um, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
Thank you to one of you for being here this morning for our church service. Hope you'll join us again uh, in the weeks ahead. And hopefully we'll continue to have cloud cover every Sunday. Uh, we've been living right so far. No rain and yet cloud cover. So come join us if you're on the internet. Come join us. We're having a great time here at the pavilion. So let us bow for our closing benediction. Lord, grant us. Lord, make. Sorry, let us repeat my apologies. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine Master, grant that a man so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning for service. Thank you for joining us on the internet. I hope you'll join us again uh, in the weeks ahead. Thanks for being here.